We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Uh, Chris Kane Wandu joins us this morning. Chris, I was going to say Merry Christmas, but of course, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've seen this year. Oh, we but, have? Uh, so many New Year uh, wishes cannot be enough. So it's nice to see you. Um, again this morning. Good morning and good morning to our viewers. Morning, Chris. Welcome. All right, then. Um, Thank you. We just uh, start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. The Punch talks about Emefili, DSS running battle paused as CBN governor resumes. Let's not forget that it's been on the news that the CBN governor has, has been wanted by the DSS. I mean, there's several stories and reports, but however, he hasn't been around, but According to the news yesterday, he was at the office. Underneath, it says, confusion as Secret Service debunks claim of arrest. Uh, another writer says, governor vows to work under president's direction. MFA will chair next MPC meeting. That's according to a spokesperson. Now, moving away from that, oil blocks licensing to end in April. That's what the federal government is saying. Inflation drops slightly and production costs remain high. States, local government meets RMAFC and wants higher revenue. Now, just before we move away, uh, DPO warned us hours before uh, Vandy killed lawyer. Uh, that's according to the inspector. As soon as two federal government over withheld salaries. INEC office attackers kill policemen, guards, defend facility. It's really unfortunate. I mean, the constant attack on you know the office of INEC or offices of INEC across the country. Another uh, headline just before we move away, Tunubu PCC demands Atiku's prosecution and PDP protest. Now it's according to the Grat video, but that's the much we can take this morning on the Punch uh, newspaper. Away from the punch to the nation newspaper, the main headline there this morning, APC PCC six Atikus probe for fraud within 72 hours. With the rider there, petitions EFCC, ICPC, CDB, the XVP unfit to contest, PDP fires back. Uh, above the masthead, Soludo's shorty proposal splits Kano's family, IPOB. Then slain Catholic priest survived Madala bombing, kidnapping. I killed, or well, one rather, not I, one killed in INEC office attack. NBS is saying inflation rates dropped from 21.47 to 21.34% in December as 18 died in road accident. More stories on the nation this morning. World Economic Forum predicts global recession interest rates hike. Bolale Rahim, killer police suspect, pleads not guilty. Why new revenue formula plan can't work by RMAFC? Those are the major stories on the front page of the nation newspaper. Well... We have uh, the Guardian in front of us this morning, uh, turning attention from the nation. The Guardian newspaper says, subsidy, stop 100% fuel importation. Labor charges the government. Well, how can this be when we don't have functional refineries? And it's very, I mean, it's rocket science to have our refineries working, so we will continue to import. Now, <clears throat> underneath, local refinery is way out, uh, says... Pengerson, local refinery is way out. Government issuing or using subsidy to blindfold masses, says Okon. Which of the Okons? I'm sure you want to find out. The class state of emergency probe on subsidy and labor to resist presidential candidates calling for removal, says NLC. Now, these are some of the writers you find underneath the board caption of the Guardian newspaper this morning. CBN confirms the Mayfield's resumption silent on alleged planned arrest. However, you have other quotes saying that the DSS had, you know, said w we had no intention of arresting uh, or invading his office because there were reports that uh, DSS had invaded the CBN's headquarters, you know, to arrest and one of you. Well, let's see how all of that, you know, pans out. 25 million Nigerians are risk of severe hunger in 2023. FAO warns. Uh, that's a lot. 
25 million Nigerians at risk of severe hunger in 2023. That's so much. Uh, Kogi government rejects monarch's reply to query. And uh, just before we move away, uh, you also have another Atiku Obi fault bad leadership in states plans to salvage Nigeria. And 30 days to polls, APC demands Atiku's quits as PDP seeks to Nibu's arrest. So there's a back and forth, uh, you know, with the parties. And custom the Christ killing of officers by smugglers. These are the headlines of the Guardian newspaper this morning. And the final one we are reviewing is the leadership newspaper. The major story this morning, Atiku Tinubu renew war over alleged corruption with several writers. Ashiwaju asks EFCC to probe arrest ex-vice president. You are distracting Nigerians from core issues, Atiku replies. Obi at Chatham House vows to dismantle the cabal. Other stories on the leadership, military kills two wanted terrorist commanders, 40 others in Niger. Liquidity crunch threatens federal government's 6 million mass metering deployment. Above the masthead 2023 election, a fight to the finish that attributed to Wiki. Jonathan warns politicians against hate campaigns. Other stories, new oil build rounds to advance energy security, sustainability. That's according to the NUPRC. Stop brain drain now, medical directors tell federal government. And of course, Bolali Rahim, accused officer Vande pleads not guilty. Those are the stories on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Um, Chris Kane, I want to thank you once again for being part of the show. We do appreciate your time. By the way, uh, Kende Wandu is Executive Director, African Governance and Leadership. Good morning. Leadership. Good morning, Wazi. Yes, nice please. to be here. Yes, please. Uh, which of the headlines would you like to start off with this morning that interests you as we went through the front pages of the national dailies? As far as I'm concerned, there are only, two, one, only one headline, and that is the return of uh, Wadu. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you say it, the return. I guess <laughs> that was just Jara. The main, the main is the <laughs> Godwin Emeple's return. When most of us thought that the man has Japa, <laughs> finally reported yesterday, and uh, and uh, showed him with so much controversy on whether he was um, the uh, DSS um, invading his office to arrest him or not. But that was uh, eventually uh, debunked by the DSS. Uh, Gordon and Mephele returned to Nigeria yesterday after several weeks outside the country. Lent, he was in the UK and also in the United States. And while he was away, there was a lot of um, issues that popped up. One was the, um, the suit by DNCS to get him arrested for alleged terrorism uh, uh, funding. Um, that was one. Then there was also the issue of the controversial uh, repainting. I call it repainting. Because when the people say redesign, that's not like design, the painting of an element. And the various um, narrative that was issued by the central bank, uh, um, directed by counter directives on, um, on the new Naira notes, and uh, the withdrawal of all old Naira notes, uh, which will last uh, in about um, 13 days' time um, uh, in Nigeria, and the issues surrounding the unavailability of the new Naira note, uh, uh, you, you, have to you have to understand that for several days, uh, most of the time we're talking on the program, we'll be talking about the issue of not getting this new Naira note. So the man finally surfaced yesterday, and we learned that um, while he was coming back, he, he had about six senior advocates of men waiting for him at the airport that escorted him to his office, probably in ways for legal firewood. Um, but the fact is that he's back, and everybody feels that he should be back to handle this issue of uh, the design or new Naira notes to a logical conclusion and make sure that all these controversies surrounding it is sorted that once and for all. So it's good that he's back, and um, we also learned from the, um, the Central Bank that we're chairing the Finance, Com uh, Finance Committee, um, that I think it's today, and that's coming up today. And um, that, that is what it is. Whether this way has reached DSS, whether DSS is strategizing on arresting him, whether he will be arrested, prosecuted, 
for alleged, for some of the alleged offenses that the SS says came, came up with is just to be seen. But let us make this clear. If there are certain infractions, um, uh, the governor of Central Bank can be summoned by the governor, they can be arrested. The only person, only people that are exempted from the constitution from being prosecuted uh, by the constitution, the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as an end, are the president, the vice president, governor, and deputy governor. And when I mean governors, I mean state governor, not central bank governor. Every other person can be arrested and prosecuted if the state finds him wanting on certain infractions. And that is what it is for now. All right, um, Chris, uh, let's uh, look at some other papers uh, this morning. Uh, let's slide on to the leadership newspaper. The main story is uh, the war of words uh, at the, um, on alleged corruption between Atiku and, of course, uh, Tinubu. We also have um, stories uh, concerning uh, a fight to the finish. That's the 2023 election, uh, which is attributed to the governor of uh, River State, Nelson Weekend, of course, former governor of former president, Good luck, Jonathan, is warning politicians against uh, hate campaigns. When can we get to a situation, to a place uh, when our electionary process would be devoid of, um, you know, uh, maybe unhealthy rivalry, hate speeches, uh, hate campaigns, and all of that? It will always, always be like that. Um, if you may remember, even the United States uh, election that uh, Britain dropped Donald Trump, there were lots and lots of Muslim between Donald Trump and the former um, Secretary of State, uh, for, uh, Secretary of State uh, for the United States, uh, Hillary Clinton. If you remember vividly, up to the point where even uh, some people, some women, came out to say that uh, they were raped by Donald Trump, and so many other allegations. That of Hillary was the uh, the, the review that um, classical uh, classical information um, were allegedly. Um, found uh, on his uh, our personal phone, and which he's not supposed to use. And others. so, when it came to the last election, also we saw the Muslim between Muslims between the um, incumbent president uh, Joe Biden and also Donald Trump, and how that went. So it's part of politicking. But the problem between what they do there is that why there is why they focus on the message and what they for their people um, here in Nigeria. We have uh, issues where our leaders just don't focus on issues. The what Nigerians are much more interested in what these people can do. That is what are you going to tackle the issue of insecurity? Are you going to tackle the issue of economy? Are you going to tackle the um, uh, issue of uh, petroleum um, that has become a problem um, for everybody? Despite all the effort being made, people still queue for about two, three hours to get uh, this thing. The problem of unemployment is very key. We have about 130 million Nigeria out of, um, uh, you know, uh, on, uh, under the poverty benchmark, and so many other issues. That is what's uh, supposed to uh, be the cardinal point of the campaign, and that is what we want to hear for the people that want to. We're not just focusing on the issues as they, they are just necessarily distracting us. And, and I believe that this is deliberate on the part of politicians just to distract Nigerians and move away from the focus and the basic focus. And you can understand, the, I understand what is going on. Remember in 2015, there are so many promises that was made by President Muhammad Buhari um, to Nigerian people, where he made so many promises of which Nigerians started, when they started holding my accountable to it, he said, oh, he didn't say that, I didn't say that. I'm sure most of them are trying to avoid that because whatever they say now will be held, will be used to hold them accountable when they are elected. They are trying to shy away that, and just a, a man that is has his on fire is running after that. They are talking about um, uh, that of the APC. They are talking about um, uh, Atiku uh, that he should be prosecuted by EFCC. Uh, somebody came out and alleged that he threw some voice mails that Atiku was, uh, um, uh, he, he was corrupt that he stole some money and rest of them without any substantial evidence. And I'm very, very surprised that somebody in the like of um, uh, Mr. Pesos Kiyam was supposed to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. He's even at the arrowhead of this. He cannot just sue somebody based on mere allegations. It is not even possible. You must have 
enough evidence to be able to start. Is there an evidence? Do you have um, um, uh, substantial evidence to prove that? Or just somebody will come? Yeah, I can just wake up and just um, put anything on social media and just record and say you are a thief. Does that make it right? Does that make that you're a thief? So uh, that is uh, just distracting. I also realized it's also holding on to um, asking them um, that um, Tinubu should be arrested over the age involvement in drug-related activities in, in, uh, in the United States of America that was uh, made by uh, an online uh, influencer or whatever you call it. These are not the issues for me. We have nearly 39 days, to, 39 to 38 days to the general election. What Nigerians want to know is that's what you do, and how you go going about it. How you can take Nigeria out of the current problem we're having, a country that have a debt portfolio of over 77 trillion naira. How are you going to make this work? How are you going to shop for the economy so that we don't depend only on um, crude oil and source other avenues of what's our level of infrastructure are you going to put there? Those are the, the issues that they are, they, are, they are just trying to distract us. And I don't think that Nigeria should take their eyes off the ball. Uh, they don't use us plenty. Um, uh, and uh, I think it's high time we shine our eyes, make sure that we'll be able to use that good come 20, uh, in February uh, and March uh, this year to be able to make the necessary change. We have over 90 million Nigerians that are registered. Let all of them come out and make sure that they vote. And surely they vote me definitely count this time around because of the use of the papers. Well, um, I'd like to share your thoughts also on another headline on the Guardian newspaper this morning. It talks about, it's a report, uh, you know, that was put out on January the 16, 2023, um, that nearly 25 million Nigerians um, had um, weeks of facing... I can't hear you. I can't raise your voice a bit. I think the voice has dropped. Uh, Chris, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. But let me stream my ears. Okay, so I'm hoping that, you know, the uh, technical team would take uh, pay attention to that uh, concern that you have raised. Uh, I'm... Asking to show your thoughts on the Guardian newspaper now. Uh, the Guardian newspaper has a headline that talks about nearly 25 million Nigerians at risk of facing hunger between June and August 2023. Uh, that's a lean season, and if urgent action is not taken, according to you know the October 2022 report, we, we probably might just be headed towards this. And this is just the projected increase from estimated 17 million people currently at risk of food security. Uh, Chris, how do you respond to this? Chris Kende, can you hear us? Okay, so I think that we probably have been disconnected. Uh, hopefully, we're able to, you know, have that reconnection with Chris Kenda Wandu, uh, who is the executive director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative, right here. Uh, he's been sharing his thoughts on the papers. But um, Justin, you know, yeah. let's get back to the studio. Uh, Justin, I yeah. remember vividly there's a program of government reset program. I think it's the uh, when I remember that program. It's it's. It's been put out to end food insecurity. And here there's a concern that, uh, well, you know, 25 million, million persons. Not also to forget the fact that we have uh, currently 17, 17 million, million who are faced with, you know, food insecurity. Mm -hmm. And that's not, you know, rocket science. You can't yes, begin no. to argue if you look at the issue of the continued violence and uh, insecurity just, in just the north or northeastern part head. of the we country. Just nailed it on the head. Yeah, so, so, so these are the issues. And it's, it's really worrisome mm. uh, that uh, this number of persons will be faced with uh, food shortage. It's sad. Like, you, like I said, you've uh, hit the nail on the head. If you sort the issue of insecurity, it will go a very long way. I had a talk with um, Gospel Obele, uh, an economist, who were projecting for the year 2023. I asked uh, what should be the immediate uh, concerns of um, the incoming administration as it is. And the first thing he said was um, they have to fix insecurity. If you fix insecurity, it will actually, in so many ways, uh, sort all of the issues concerning our economic challenges. For instance, food security. If you uh, fix the issue of insecurity, farmers can go back to their farms. You know, Nigerians can actually go to the north to bring food down to the south. These days, most people are scared of using the roots. Oh, so, okay. so, so, I think so, we have um, Chris back, right? Yes, yes. I'm told that we have Chris back. Chris, uh, thank you for joining us once again. 
thank you very much. I'm back. All right, then. Quickly, I'd, I was asking about your thoughts on the recent uh, report that's been put out that, you know, 25 million Nigerians might just be facing hunger. You know, June to August, there's going to be hunger. Yes, um, if you remember really in my earlier uh, comment, I talked about about 130 million, 33 million Nigerians sliding into poverty. And that to me is a very huge one. And um, so this report coming out, um, I'm sure that we have more than that. We're going to have more than that. There are so many um, reasons for this. One is the level of insecurity across Nigeria, which has made food production very, very low, and people are not going to their farms any longer. The farms are not secured. The farmers are being, um, are being kidnapped on a daily basis and for ransom. If you go to most part of the northeast and northwest, banditry and the likes. Um, you come to North Central, Benue, and um, Benue, Taraba, and like the same problem uh, is being faced. Then the South is as well. So uh, you can see that food production is on the decline, and that is going to have a, uh, a serious uh, impact on the food chain supply across Nigeria. That is one. The second one also, we have seen, we had serious um, flood, uh, flooding across Nigeria um, in, towards the end of last year. And so many farmlands were destroyed. In fact, I remember with me of a particular company that lost um, a 100 million naira, it's 1 million or 1 billion naira uh, uh, rice farm um, to flooding. Um, it devastated a lot of um, the farms across the north and some other parts of, uh, of the south. That in itself is going to have a equal effect. Uh, and to uh, this year. So those are the challenges, but, uh, which is what I said, our politicians to focus on how they're going to bring, um, bring us prosperity, how Nigerians are going to get out of the poverty level. It used to be about 101 in those days, if you remember, Mercy, basically how we to say it. Now people are going to pay zero, zero, zero. People don't even eat at all you know, on a whole day. And those are the issues we are talking about. And life is not becoming, is not uh, getting easier. You see the level of Japa, everybody practically, even the skilled, our, so, our very skilled uh, uh, people and skilled Nigerians uh, are living in droves. Teachers are living, doctors are living, even bankers that are earning so well that you think that they, they are all, they are moving. Uh, even our own sector, um, you know how many of your colleagues, if you look back in the past few months, have ever gone to Canada, um, to US or UK um, for the greener pastures. Those are the issues I think that should be bothering our leaders. Uh, how are we able to get out, out of this? This is a country with so much potential. We call ourselves giants uh, in Africa. Uh, this is an elephant with a clay feet. And that is the problem we're having. And it's not that lack of want but, but, that we but don't Chris, have the capacity. Chris, because I, we don't I, have I, I'd, like to, I, I'd like to come in there now, especially when you mentioned that it's not like we don't have the capacity because um, the triggers for all of this have been mentioned. For instance, the issue of climate change, uh, continued uh, conflicts, inflation, rising food prices. Uh, these are, you know, the uh, drivers if you want to talk about. And uh, the fact that uh, food access has been affected by continuous violence, which you have also mentioned. So how come we haven't, because this is not new, it's not like we're just getting to hear this today for the first time. These are conversations that have been happening in different spaces and in different fora. So... How, why haven't we been able to um, nip the issue in the bud? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I said we don't have the leaders that have the political will and work with that to be able to do the day through. You are talking of climate change. Is, is climate change a problem of Nigeria? You know? Every other country is facing climate change and they are going about it. I know how to be able to um, find a way around it. So uh, it, it, it all boils down to leadership. If we have a leader, we have leaders that are so focused. I know what to do. This, this, even in African countries, there are so many African countries that Nigeria is far, far better than, bigger than you, whatever. And I'm better than, look at you, go and see what is happening in Rwanda and some other countries of Africa. That is leaders. That is a, the, in Rwanda for one, as a country that um, has several, a, 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 um, a civil war that claimed over one million lives. And you can see the way they rebounce because they have somebody that was able to be able to be on top of the game and be able to turn things around. And they, today, they are, they, were, they are one of the most advanced countries in Africa. So we used to be, 
There used to be a time that Nigeria, when Nigeria sneezes, every other part of Africa catches cold. But that is not the truth. So it's all boiled down to leadership. That is why I say we have all the potentials, both the material and human resources, to be a great country. But until we're able to get leaders that can be able to harness these opportunities and make a good meal of it, then we'll continue to find ourselves where we are. So um, we have to make sure that the area of, yes, we'll deal with insecurity. Um, it's a big challenge. But if we can lead a, a, a bit of insecurity and also be a bit uh, some kind of genuity, ingenuity on how we handle issues, I think that uh, some of these uh, problems will be reduced drastically. All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's stay with uh, The Guardian uh, for one minute um, and look at another issue, uh, which is sounding like a broken record every other time, subsidy payment. Uh, Labor uh, is charging government to stop 100% um, fuel importation. This is coming in the wake of um, the 3.36 trillion naira the federal government has earmarked to spend on budget for the first um, six months of this year. Also, uh, Pengerson is saying that a local refining is the way out. Do you think uh, maybe maybe some uh, it's a bit of a missed place uh, uh, budgeting or financing specifically? Would you say if the federal government spends the 3.36 trillion on subsidy per se and uh, channel that funds to uh, local refining, I will be singing um, a different tune right now? First and foremost, it would be very important, near possibility uh, for government to stop 100% importation of wealth. If they do that, how do we run the economy? How are we going to run uh, our vehicles? How are we going to run the generators that we don't have power? You remember that advert by one bank in those days, where I say very soon uh, vehicles will run on water. I'm sure most, <laughs> we, I'm sure you still remember that advert. Mm -hmm. yes, really. I'm looking out today when the vehicles will start running on water, but the vehicles have not started running on water. <laughs> what most other countries, other countries are, are doing now is moving away from use of fuel and um, uh, using electricity uh, to power vehicles. Some countries have decided that in the next 10 years, they will um, ease out completely the use of um, um, vehicles um, that consume fuel. That is, that those are countries that are looking forward and have foresight on what they want to do. But coming back home, we cannot even do that now because we don't, none of the refineries are working. Over 99% of fuel consumption in Nigeria is, uh, is, being, is being imported. And because of the corruption within the endemic corruption within the system, some people are benefiting from this importation which is why they have made it near impossible for the refineries to work. The few ones that we have are practically dead. We're going to budget billions and billions of naira for turn around maternal that and we don't turn around anything. And on a daily basis, we continue to see inflows of fuel um, importation. So we want to be able to turn around our, um, our refineries and we are self-sufficient in um, um, production of petroleum, we cannot subs uh, the subsidy. The fact remains that even in 2015, this government promised to build several refineries, no single one has built it. Now, what they have been looking forward to is the Dangote uh, petrol, uh, petroleum that is coming on stream. We are led that that petroleum um, uh, refinery will be open this month. But information reaching me is that it was a fake news that it, that refinery will not be open this month by President Mari, Mari, Mari. So what option we do have we have? have? To go now, we please. have to, yes. We yes, have to go. That's, that's, but I, I would leave you to think about this. Maybe I don't know if you're going to answer. Do you think that we would get to a point where we want to use water to run our vehicles <laughs> when? <laughs> when and when no, no, that's no, right. No, Chris, Chris, yes, let me land with my thoughts. <laughs> my point is, do you think that we'll get to a point where we want to use water to run our vehicles or move away from the use of fossil fuel when we know that that's yes. where we're eating from? Right? Because we haven't yeah. been great, you know, on diversifying other means. I mean, oil still remains, uh, you know, a the main huge stay. main stay for our revenue. Uh, so, so I'm but, wondering, do, do you think that we're thinking towards that direction? I don't know. Let's see, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Okay. If you I'm sure those of, uh, our forefathers that um, grew up in 16-something, 15-something, uh, never ever believed that there would be a day that people would be flying. You understand what I mean? You, you understand what I mean? There was no aeroplane, there was no car, they were moving in cameras and the rest of them. 
I know that there's a possibility. Don't forget, as I said, remember the advert of Bank PHB in those days. So how will, we, how will we now share the national cake now if oil is taken? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is that is another. That's the issue. Man. That's exactly what I'm asking. <laughs> that is, <laughs> All right, Chris. Let, 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 let me put your bubble a, a bit. Well, we, this is I told you about the electric cars. The problem is that even we start those there. Uh, I saw you saw one particular one that was trading on uh, on Twitter one time. A particular electric car that broke down on Todd Mellon Bridge because there was no there was no there was no light to charge it. <laughs> oh, but they need to go and get power bank for that. So, <laughs> that issue. so until we do what needs to be done, I have also thought. I know that this thing is possible for goodness sake. Mm. Moving us from four thousand um, megawatt of electricity. To 20,000 20, or 40,000 is something we can do. Wow. But the problem is that, do you know how much we spend on, 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 the, on the, that sector since 1999? That alone can be able to give us about 50,000 uh, megawatts of electricity, even mm. more than what South Africa has. Right, but we see what because of the corruption. This is where we are. All right, we have to go now, Chris. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. I mean, it's always a delight, you know, to have you share your thoughts on this issue. And we always enjoy your company. Thank you much. Even the, if the electricity car come now, we'll not be part of it. <laughs> we will never be part of it. <laughs> All right, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. You too. So, Messi, <laughs> if you were the one driving an EV Why car, you and you are stuck on Third Man, I will you not go? lend you my power bank to push your car. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we can take us off the press for right back in a minute. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs>